supposed to have to know. Sorry. This is I think it's time. Is it 10.50 that we're supposed to start? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, we are going to begin then. Okay. We, I apologize. We have kind of a lame set up in the room here. <laughs> but uh, we'll make, make do the best we can. I think um, it's a hall. Yeah, actually, there's a little lobby area here. Uh, we'll probably end up having to close that door because it gets loud out there. Um, but the problem is this door is locked. <laughs> so, it's real nice. All right, my name is Stan Jordies. Um I'm from uh, Sarasota. I do, uh, I've been working with Dot and Hoop for, uh, I think, since about three months after the project originally launched in 2000. In, I've been working with it early 2003. I think it came out... Um, the original .NET New project was uh, was launched like Christmas Eve 2002 by Sean Walker. Um, I'm a community leader. I run the service of a dev group. Um, I'm an MVP in Visual Basic. Uh, actually, in the process right now of uh, that's the book cover over there, um, putting uh, book chapters together. We're we're doing the, the third edition of the book. This was originally done by the core group in in versions three and four, and for whatever reasons they didn't want to do it this time, so. Uh, a group of us here in Florida, which includes, well, Sean Walker's on the left, so he's not in Florida, but uh, Brian Scarbo and uh, Daryl Hardy <laughs> and myself and uh, Ryan Morgan uh, actually got the project. So it's four Florida developers, and we're each doing four chapters in the book. And I've got uh, my, my author reviews in the bag, and they're asking for them back as soon as possible. We're going to publish the book, I think, in uh, February. So um, it's it's... It's the general purpose book. It doesn't really deep dive. Uh, there's four chapters of module development, and that's really what I'm going to talk through today. Um, there is another book I know coming out on specifically on module development that Mitchell Sellers is, is putting together. He's one of the guys that you'll see in the forums a lot. Um, my .NET new information on my website is woefully out of date. Um, I'm going to try to get it updated before the book launches finally. Um, but the slide deck that I'm going to show you here is available on my website if you go to bbnetexpert.com and then go to uh, my .NET new DNN downloads page, you can get the slide deck. Okay, so the slide deck, for the most part, the, the style that I use is um, it's really there for a reference. I'm going to go through the slides pretty quickly, and I'm going to get into code and try to do demos online as much as possible, uh, you know, in, in Visual Studio, um, because that's where... That's what you guys really want to see anyway. So who is using DNN in production today who's here? Okay, great. And who's done any module development today? Okay, good. A few. And who's seen DNN 5 at this point? And who's using it for anything? All right. I'm working in DNN 5, of course, since this is a DNN 5 development session. Now, the good news is module development in DNN 5 is exactly the same as it's been in, actually, since version 3. So. If you've got modules that you've developed in the past, they will still work in version 5. Not a problem at all. The architecture, the, the, the core team has been really good about putting architectures together and sticking to them. They're not making breaking changes. Uh, things, things work really well. In fact, the sample module that I've got here, I originally built in um, DNN 1. And I wrote an article in Visual Studio Magazine about it. Now, there was an architectural change between DNN 1 and 2, which created the, the model, uh, the module, um, architecture that we see today, and then version 3 made some adjustments to it. But, uh, but once I changed that module over to version 2, I essentially am running the code that I built in version 2. Now, I've, I've done quite a bit of upgrading to it, you know, putting localization, you know, using uh, using localization and that kind of stuff, which I didn't do originally, but, um, um, okay, let me, let me just keep moving here, otherwise I'll stand here and talk all day. So, <laughs> um, apologize for the... That's the poor situation <laughs> of viewing for the for that seat, but this is what we're stuck with. All right, so what we're going to do? Um, how many DNN newbies do we have in the room? All right, we have some newbies now. In the very first session today, I guess Will did an installation of DNN, right? Mm -hmm. Now, do you guys want me to do another install of DNN five? It looks a lot like before. I mean, it's optional for me here. Usually, what I do when I start this session is I install DNN and then. And then I show you how to how to build modules in it. But I, I think what I'll do is is skip that for now. Um, yeah, if you guys have already seen it, because it's the same thing. I mean, it, the install of DNN five looks very much like the install of the prior versions. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, technically what DNN uh, looks like, what its architecture is, 
why we want to do custom development, um, talk about the actual environment setup for Visual Studio, and get into design mode and show you what you know how you get in there. And because that's the thing that's the hardest to do. Once you get into design mode, then you, you know, then man, you pedal like hell. <laughs> so. Uh, um, so that's kind of a, up front, and then then we're going to dive into some of the architectural things and talk about the, the module development process overall. So custom module project setup, um, how you create your database objects, how you build your data and business objects layers, and, we'll, and I have some sample code. And we'll actually look at that code in some detail. We won't we won't be able to completely build a module coming out of here, but at least what I'm, my goal here is really to give you. Um, the basic tools and to have you exposed to what the process looks like. Okay? And then we're going to look at creating the user controls that get launched onto the forms, and then how you package your modules. And then we, we have a, a few slides, and again, this is all <coughs> reference material. There's a lot of information on the slides. Download the slide deck and use it as a reference. Okay. So essentially, .NET is a live CMS. When you, log, when, you, when you bring up a DNN site and you log into it, you can make changes right on the fly. You know, uh, you, you click the, well, once you log into a role that allows you to edit things, you can then, you know, just edit right on the screen. It's not like the old style CMSs where you created your content offline and then you then you, uh, you loaded it up to the CMS. This is just a live, you know, live edit. <laughs> um, module extensible framework app. Um, I said earlier that they've done a really good job with architecture here. They've created a provider model that allows services to be pluggable, so things like the authentic authentication service, um, the, the text editor that you use online, uh, the friendly URL service, there's there's like a, about 10 or 12 now providers. They're, they're actually taking the core plumbing of DNN, and as much as they can, they're splitting the core plumbing of DNN out into provider models so that you can, you can switch um, which provider you want to use. If you don't like the FCK editor that comes by default, you can use a different Online editor, okay, just by switching uh, some settings in your web config file. All right, it's, it's declarative. So the idea behind modules is that you get a container that's provided by .NET Nuke, and you build user controls, .ASCX files in ASP.NET, and those ASCX files get dynamically loaded on your pages when the pages come up. So everything in DNN is dynamic. It's all driven from the database. All right, so these user controls that you build are just the, the, the UI functional components, and they get injected inside these, these containers. And you'll see kind of what that means as we get into this just a little bit. Now, that module loader mechanism that they provide then allows us to easily extend out and by building our own modules, our own functionality. So if you look at the DNN portal application overall, you got you got kind of three major components. All right, you got you got portals. Right? So so .NET Nuke is virtualizable. That's the word they use. So you install .NET Nuke on a server, and you can then run as many websites on that .NET Nuke installation as you want to. Each of them has its own unique URL. Each can be skinned individually. Each can be managed individually. All right. So DNN highly virtualizable. And this is that's the key reason that DNN has become so popular because that was built in from the very beginning. To use these things called portal aliases to point different URLs at the different portals that you've got installed on the machine. So unique URLs for websites. Then inside of portals, you have pages. And the pages are what appears in the menu system and provides sort of the menu structure that you see, the, the organizational units in the portal. And then on a page, you have modules. So you have things like links and HTML and images and blogs and forums and Calendars and events, you know, all you know, all these things are modules that go inside of a dynamic page. All right, so we're going to focus today on modules. What goes into building modules? Okay, so you've heard a lot of this stuff already today, so I'm not going to belabor the points. So, why build custom modules? Well, there's several ways that you can add functionality to .NET, Maybe. and I would say that the that these are in order of priority. So most important ones be at the top for you as a user. So if you want to add functionality to .NET Nuke, the first thing I would look at doing is installing custom modules. Okay? Then you can build custom modules for yourself. So you buy